used, abused and refused the sentiments of many of the Windrush generation who were invited to Britain to help the country rebuild after the war. After settling in the UK thousands of miles from home, those very same people have faced being deported decades on. It's the 70th anniversary of the arrival of the Empire Windrush, with many events taking place across the West Midlands to mark the historic moment. In the first part of a special series tonight, Des Coleman has been to hear the stories from the families at the forefront of change. A bustling Sunday lunch as families gather to catch up and cook some homemade food. On the menu, rice and peas, Jamaican-style fish and veg, and lots of chat. But the story of how these guests are around this table today goes back generations, and in particular to the Windrush era. Already their coming has caused a national controversy. Back in 1948, thousands of people from the small islands in the Caribbean were invited to Britain at the request of the UK government. Now this was to help the country rebuild after the war. The call for help was picked up by many, who then packed up their belongings, made their way onto ships to a new country, a new way of life and a new home. Among those arriving on UK shores through the years was Carmen Dunwall. Well, when we first came here, I can remember this white man was sweeping the street mm -hmm. and he's got a necktie on. And my father says, necktie, cleaning street. The things that we see happen, totally, totally changed. Do you know when you first came over, did you want to go back to Jamaica? The first month I spent, I want to go back because I didn't like the cold. And when I have to buy the coal and to make the fire, oh God, that was, <laughs> I always want to go back. Catherine Ross, originally from St. Kitts, works with Carmen. She runs the Museum and Project, which educates people around the country on Windrush-related collections from the Caribbean. That age group was dying out, and did they have stories? And I wanted to hear the stories. We rely on artifacts that we've dug up, or we rely on books that have got saved. What I wanted is more oral histories. Yeah, yeah they're much, as we would say in the Caribbean, sweeter than just seeing the artifacts. And the thing about the Caribbean community, if there's one thing they love to do, they love to chat. Yes, yes. You know? We, we believe in the oral tradition, uh, yes, but I, I would say, yeah, we like a good chat. Catherine says people coming to the region particularly resonated with that part of England, but the reason wasn't very healthy. Well, the people who came to England were very um, pleased because, of course, we had players, um, the cigarette place, and back home people were still smoking clay pipes and things like that, unless you went to America. Um, so being here where players, you're given your free amount, people used to send them back home or give them to friends. And keeping a sense of heritage was key for many of the new arrivals. Photographer Van Lee Burke from Birmingham has been capturing the city's cultural change on the streets since the 1970s, in areas including Handsworth. So Van Lee, you've been described as the uh, godfather of black British photography. You've been taking iconic photos of black British people for over 50 years. Why? Um, well, I found it wasn't necessary. Normally what we find is history is written by the victor and we've never been in that position. It was also in response to the negative press that we were having at the time. The, the, the press was full of racism, print media and television and there wasn't a lot of TV at the time but whatever little there was, there was a lot of uh, negative um, response to the people coming here. So at the time when those shows were on television, you didn't find them offensive? We didn't find it, you know, we, we, we were living that experience. It was just someone sharing what we were living on the screen. We were fighting racism on the street, so we laughed at those sort of things that were on television. The next decades brought a slow change in attitudes towards the acceptance of the Windrush arrivals. Much progress has been made since then and the decades on. Britain is now a more diverse place because of it. But this year, 70 years since arriving, the Windrush families found themselves at the forefront of a political scandal like never before. Sajid Javid is appointed Home Secretary after the resignation of Amber Rudd. He says the Windrush scandal is his top priority. Families who had lived here for years stood to be separated over immigration documents. 
at the heart of it, claims that they were not British and had no right to live here. Rosemary Campbell Stevens, who's lived in Birmingham for years, has been recognised by the royal family for her 35 years service to education in Britain. She regularly travels to Jamaica and says that the effects of the Windrush scandal are very much alive. So, you enjoyed your time in Jamaica Absolutely. and then you came back? Yes, I did, yes. I come back regularly. Mm -hmm. My mother's here, my younger sister is here, so I come back regularly. Were you nervous about coming back to the country? Unfortunately, I was this time round, and it's because of the Windrush situation. Yeah. Um, I actually put my MBE in my handbag before I put my passport in. Why? Because I was concerned. I was concerned that I'd arrive at Heathrow, and because I was no longer living in the country, um, that I'd be asked questions about my right to be here. And I think that's an appalling situation for us to be in. Yeah. Um, my husband said to me, don't get arrested and carry your MBE, so I did. Back at lunch, I'm keen to understand how that Windrush story has passed through the generations since. It's certainly from my parents' perspective and you know, grandparents, it's the sacrifice that you know, they made you know, so I can live the life I lead you know, now. Um, you know, we had the conversation over dinner of um, our parents having you know, more than one job, um, you know, working really hard whilst looking after a home, running a home and schoolwork and everything. So, you know, to me it's about sacrifice. So it's a story of sacrifice, but what next for our Windrush families? Des Coleman, ITV News. And we'll have the second part of that series tomorrow, where Des will be meeting the descendants of the Windrush generation who are calling for wider recognition for the contributions made by their families down the years. And there's lots more on the Windrush 70th anniversary on our website and YouTube channel. The addresses are on the screen for you to see now. And Des, as I say, will be back later in the programme to give us the weather forecast. Flags have been raised across the region to mark Armed Forces Day. Veterans gathered at the National Memorial Arboretum in Staffordshire, bearing their standards ahead of the actual day of remembrance this Saturday. Thousands of people are expected to pay tribute to servicemen and women from past and present. Chris Halpin reports. Before being hoisted into pole position, veterans, officials and the Lord Lieutenant of Staffordshire had their moment with the Armed Forces Day flag to reflect on a week of...